it's about quarter after six in the morning here in Charlotte on Sunday. And I'm off back to Toronto. Wish me luck. Okay, so I'm walking through Charlotte's airport here, walking to my gate. And uh, I just had a pretty nice morning. Met up with Jason from the YouTube channel Southern Comic Geek and Izzy from Izzyverse NYC. We actually had breakfast together and had a nice chat talking about the con. And that apparently next year, Heroes Con is not going to be Father's Day weekend. It's going to be the weekend afterwards. We also talked about other cons that we visited and talked about cons that no longer exist and ones that we would love to visit one day. And it was good. It was a nice little, uh, nice little conversation. Nice way to pass some time. All right, time to hit my gate. safely back in Toronto. So I want to shout out Heroes Con. Thank you so much for hooking me up with a press pass this year. And uh, shout out to everyone that I met. Had a wonderful time. Wonderful time. Okay. It's time for the haul. Okay. So as you can see, I'm safely back. Now it's time to do a complete haul video of Heroes Con 2024. I thoroughly hope that you've enjoyed this series. Uh, it was incredible for me. It was an incredible trip. It was great to spend time with a lot of other YouTube comic creators. It was great to pose for pictures and ask people for pictures. It was great just to feel that show again. It is incredible. Please, if you're thinking about going to Heroes Con for next year, do yourself the favor, save your money however it takes. Again, you don't have to show up with a massive budget. Even if you just go to see people and try and get some stuff autographed, that's perfect. You don't think don't think you need to show up with thousands of dollars to have a wonderful time. All you need to do is make sure that you budget for food, budget for a few autographs if that's your thing, or just go and wander around the show trade some books there are vendors that are buying and trading the whole nine yards there's a lot of transactions for different things don't miss out on heroes con and thank you to the creators of heroes con for supplying me with a press pass i hope i did you well now let's take a look at some of the things i i picked up at heroes con 2024 first i'm going to start with some smaller things i was fortunate enough to receive a sticker and coaster pack from Brian LCS, the godfather himself, and the godfather of the Comic Book Community Awards. And please remember this channel, now that nominations are open, and also only slabs. Uh, I picked up a couple stickers from my guy Roscoe. One will be for myself, one will be for my LCS owner, Chris from Retro Rocket Comics. Uh, I picked up a handful of new stickers from Legion of Comics. Mark has a brand new logo. Here's a nice shiny foil one. One for myself. Again, one for Chris. Uh, the famous hashtag We Are Legion. Uh, the collaborative effort of the Illuminati. That sticker. The sticker of America's favorite comic shop, the Augusta Book Exchange. And by the way, speaking of the, the Augusta Book Exchange, the owner of the, the Augusta Book Exchange, Paul, was on the floor uh, Saturday, and I unfortunately uh, didn't get to cross paths with him. So, Paul, I'm sorry that I never got to shake your hand, but I am looking forward to the day that I get a chance to meet you. Uh, also was a big-time collectibles sticker. So, Mark, thank you for hooking me up with those. 
Uh, my guy, Digger Jim, hooked me up with a couple more stickers. Here's a, a different sticker from the Augusta Book Exchange. DJ Lynx hooked me up with a couple sticker packs. One will be for myself. One will be for Chris from Red Rocket Comics with his famous hashtag, Link Squad, or if you're Canadian, Link Squad North. Uh, my veteran brother, Pokan Joe, hooked me up with one of his homemade challenge coins. This is fantastic. As you can see, his logo's here on the front. And on the back, it has Evil Air V coin. So I'm presuming this means victory coin. Scott from Hoarder's Hide, terrific collector, great guy. Hooked me up with one of his challenge coins. This is so well made. I, uh, I got to admit, I'm a little jealous, and I may look into uh, getting one of these made uh, for my channel. Or handful, I should say. And I know they're also not cheap. My goodness, though, that's uh, some some good work there. And the last two items I'm going to show that are a little bit smaller is a magnet from Comics Curing Cancer. So these were being distributed at the Comics Curing Cancer booth. Uh, I got to admit, the hot spot for a lot of uh, YouTube personalities. It was kind of like our meeting point. I felt like I was going there every hour, every couple hours, just to see how everyone was. And if there was anyone that I haven't seen at the con, we would kind of congregate there and get to shake hands, give some hugs. But yeah, Comics Curing Cancer. Now, Comics Curing Cancer had uh, lots of things that they were that they were selling in the name of the American Cancer Society. Uh, the art book, the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, exclusive. The one thing that caught my eye and again, I had to be careful with my money. Uh, the one thing that caught my eye, and I was like, I, I gotta have that, was this. The Comics Curing Cancer Tumblr. I know DJ mentioned to me that these are very, very limited. And uh, I, I, when I saw it, I was like, I, that's great. I'm going to use this at work. It'll give me a chance to talk about my hobby. It'll give me a chance to talk about this wonderful charity that's going on, even though that it is an American, uh, it, even though that it is an American uh, charity. I'm all about spreading the word, so I am happy to have this uh, finally. Because when I saw it, I thought, "Well, oh, that's cool," but when I saw it in person, I knew I had to have it. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the autographs I picked up. And speaking of comics curing cancer, last year they had a uh, an exclusive comic book, their first, and this is it. Uh, this is Unnatural Order, and actually had this book dual signed. It's signed by cover artist for the exclusive cover, uh, Matt Wilson, and the letterer Justin Birch. He signed it up there. I also had that same letterer Justin Birch sign a couple more books for me. Uh, he did the work on House of Slaughter, so I had him sign House of Slaughter number 20. This great cover. And the one per store variant of House of Slaughter as well. And uh, as you can see, it's a nice cover with uh, with the logo there. And Justin signed it down in the bottom right corner. So Justin, thank you, my man, for signing that. Now, a book from my childhood is ElfQuest. So I had the opportunity to meet both Wendy and Richard Penny, and uh, I had them sign issue number one of the Epic Comics uh, volume, which is just a reprinting in full color of the original series that was released from Warp Graphics in a, in a magazine-sized style comic book. I had them also sign issue number one of the later volume, Sea Jet Blue Mountain. As you can see, they signed it here, like their autograph placement was was fantastic as well. Uh, I had Rick Leonardi sign a handful of Spider-Man 2099 books. So I had Rick sign issue number one, this famous cover. He signed it up here in the red. I know normally he signs it down, down here, but he had the red in his hand and he decided to put it up there across the top of uh, McGill's arm. Happy to have that in my collection. He signed issue number two, 
down here near this explosion. He signed it in black. And the final Rick Leonardi autograph is the conclusion of Spider-Man 2099's origin story. And uh, he signed it in red right across here. Solid cover. Okay, moving on to a DC book. It's the death of Superman. And uh, Dan Jurgens signed this tombstone cover right here in nice baby blue. I think it looks great. Scotty Young signed his web store exclusive of Ultimate Spider-Man issue number one. Right there. Great signature placement. Nice guy. And an A-OK -okay from Brother John was this Wonder Woman 52 B cover. And he A-OK, -okay, he pardon me, he A-OK'd this book to me, and it's actually signed by one of my all-time favorite artists, Jenny Frizen. John, thank you for this. Okay, now let's take a look at two raw books that I picked up. Again, I was budgeting, had to be very careful with my money. But I picked up Transformers number one. Now this is not this is not a comic book in great shape. However, I'm happy to have it because I never owned Transformers number one. So I'm very happy to have this uh, in my collection. And I got to be honest, uh, that night when I got back to my hotel my hotel room, I read it from front to back, and uh, yeah, it just it really took me back because. I started picking up Transformers around issue 6 and and I was off to the races and then shortly after the Game Over cover came out and if you know, you know and it kind of blew me away They what they did with that particular series and then Headmasters came along but yeah, I'm happy to have Transformers issue number 1 in my collection finally and the other book that I've been quietly searching for for a couple years is Aquaman 42. Now the story is uh, someone, one of our guests on Only Slab brought this book on while it was slabbed and I was blown away by how beautiful the cover was. Now I am not an Aquaman collector. I've never really sat down and read any of his single books, but this cover, which is also the first appearance, or pardon me, the second appearance of Black Manta, his arch nemesis, well, the cover is just beautiful. They, they let the artist remove the trade dress and incorporate uh, the Aquaman title into the artwork itself. I think I've only seen that a handful of times. And this cover, in my opinion, is the best Aquaman cover ever made. Uh, I spent $40 on it. I've seen this book in much worse shape for over $100. But this is Aquaman 42, this iconic post, uh, movie poster type of cover. But yeah, as you can see, it says, is this my foe? Aquaman 42. And uh, I basically went to 10 or 15 different dealers looking at, at, at long boxes that actually had Aquaman areas. And I'm kind of going through it. I'm like 49, or pardon me, 39. 40, 41, come on, and then it would jump to 43. Everyone was getting that Black Manta second appearance. Everyone was getting this cover. And then just one moment while hanging out with Brian, Will, and Jim, I happened to see it on the wall. And right away I was like, I'm sorry guys, but I got to go talk about that book. And this is it. Glad to have this finally in my collection. It may get cleaned and pressed. It may get slabbed. That's how important this cover is to me. Okay, now let's take a look at some other autograph books. These ones are basically going to be from the same artist. If you know, you know. This is Something is Killing the Children, this gorgeous foil variant signed by the one and only Jenny Frizen. As you can see, she signed it in silver beautifully across the bottom of the book. I also had Jenny sign this 1 in 100 variant uh, for Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, issue number one. Again, she signed it in silver. 
This was an AOK -okay from Dr. Von Hoot's comics from the Spiral Dimension. And uh, Dr. Von Hoot is located over in the UK. And uh, he sent World Tree number one, this incredible foil virgin variant to me. And uh, she signed it right through the middle of the bottom there. And she actually mentioned like, oh, she, has, she hasn't seen very many copies of this one. Let's see if I can get the foil to kind of catch. There we go. You can see the, the foil in red kind of light with the or kind of shine with that light with the light ring there but yeah happy to have this again dvh thank you very much this is a book that's going into the comic army box giveaway which will happen uh the first wednesday in july this is scarlet witch issue number one signed by jenny frizen so if you are a channel member you have an you have an opportunity to win this along with many other comic books if you haven't joined the comic army you may want to select uh, the button below to hit join join the channel membership there are two tiers for you to select from and uh the first wednesday of the month your name will be entered uh for the opportunity to win this along with many other comic books so i'm setting that one aside into the comic army pile uh, a dc book she signed for me is poison ivy eight this b cover she signed in silver up here this is just a gorgeous cover of poison ivy next is another something is killing the children offering this is a virgin variant and she signed it right here again she mentioned that eric uh, erica slaughter is actually one of her favorite uh one of her favorite characters to draw another ivy cover is one where she's surrounded by flowers uh, Jenny Frizen signed it right here. Very nice. Another book which was probably in everyone's hands that was in line to get uh, a, Johnny, a, Jen, me, a Jenny Frizen signature was uh, Ghost Spider issue number one. So she signed mine kind of going across that way. When I put this book in front of her, which was uh, a gift also from Chris from Retro Rocket Comics, she said, oh, I haven't seen this in a very long time. And this is uh, Ghost, issue number seven. She signed it going across that way. And one of my favorite covers that she has done for 2024 belongs to Vampirella. And I had her sign this gorgeous foil. As you can see, she signed right through here. Again, I really think this is one of her best for 2024. I had her sign this incredible Harley Quinn issue 31 with Harley and Poison Ivy on the cover there. Jenny Frizen signed it right there. Gorgeous cover. I had her sign this Something is Killing the Children cover right here. Love it. And another AOK -okay came from Adam, Collecting with Durs. Now, Adam knows that I am a huge Jenny Frizen fan. And he was at a con previously and had the opportunity to meet Jenny Frizen. And he actually got Catwoman 45 personalized to me. So, Adam, thank you very much. It was very thoughtful of you. And uh, she put two Chris and signed it in silver on this particular day. And Adam hooked me up. Uh, bright and early at Heroes Con with this book. So Adam, again, thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. And the final book I'm going to show that's autographed, that's raw, is for Chris from Retro Rocket Comics. Now earlier I showed a pair of ElfQuest books that were signed by creators Richard and Wendy Penny. Well, Chris actually has the original magazine size issue number one of when elf quest began this is actually the third printing with a gorgeous cover and uh, it's signed beautifully here by richard and over here by wendy and again elf quest number one from back in the 70s and this this copy is actually in beautiful shape and uh i was happy to have it done for chris Okay, now let's take a look at some of the slabs that I picked up. I picked up the Amazing Spider-Man issue 25, the Greg Land ske sketch cover, and a 9.8 for cheap. I believe I spent $40 on this, uh, which is basically like cheaper than the cost of grading, at least for me. 
So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this in my PC or if this is going to be something I give away when my channel reaches 2,000 subscribers. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I don't think I'm all that far away, maybe 150 subscribers away from 2,000. But uh, yeah, this is a gorgeous cover. The Amazing Spider-Man issue 25, uh, the Greg Land sketch cover. There we go. The next book I'm going to show is also a 9-8. And this is the book that's on my top 10, uh, top 10 grail hunting for 2024. Did I say that right? The top 10 books I'm hunting in 2024. I'm just going to leave that in. And it is Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue number 7. This iconic cover from George Perez featuring the death of Supergirl. So I'm very happy to have this and in my PC and to cross off another Big Grail book from my top 10 list. I think there's only a handful left now. I can think of three right away. ASM 700, the Shockwave cover Transformers 5, the death of Robin Batman 428, and a handful of DC vs. Vampire issues. Uh, a book that I had slabbed myself at the show, uh, which I ended up picking originally at a garage sale, for about a quarter or 50 cents as it was in a, a stack of books about yay big for five bucks a number of years ago probably 10 or 12 or 15 probably probably 15 years ago uh is x-men 130 it is a new stand edition it is the first appearance of dazzler and i had the book clean and pressed by hot off the press and it came back in a 7-0 and i'll be honest i'm probably going to let this book go so if you're watching this video and you're interested in this book, reach out to me on Instagram and uh, make me an offer. I, uh, I, uh, I'm probably going to let this book go. I'll, I'll be brutally honest. But I'm very happy with the result. Again, the book was clean and pressed, and it just looks great. Uh, for a book that was just sitting without a bag and board on someone's lawn, and uh, that got clean and pressed eventually and taken care of, a 7-0 for the first Dazzler, solid, solid book. And again, new stand edition, off-white to white pages. The final book I'm going to show is the book that was asked many questions of me by other people attending Heroes Con. So I have Captain America 111. This book was also beautifully cleaned and pressed by Hot Off the Press. And, uh, I decided before I went before I was going to Heroes Con that I was going to have Jim Steranko sign it. Now Jim Steranko is one of the few living legends that we have left in the comic book community. We've lost many creators over the last three years, and Steranko is one of those iconic artists that I didn't have their I didn't have his autograph of. So last year I missed out on the opportunity at Heroes Con to get Steranko. This year, I wasn't going to let that happen. So I got one of Captain America's most famous covers. Again, I picked it up at a, at a Comic-Con called the Kitchener Collectibles Ex Expo. It was a, a package deal for Captain America 111, uh, G.I. Joe number 2, and G.I. Joe number 2, the second printing. And I believe I only paid $80 Canadian for it. Spent a little bit of money getting it cleaned and pressed, and the book was gorgeous. I, re I really thought it would have been somewhere between a 7 and an 8 once it came back, which is not bad for a book that came out in early 1969. So the morning went with myself and Marcus from uh, the YouTube channel Circumstances with also a CGC witness. We went over to Stranko's booth. I was second in line. We had a great conversation, talked about the book, and when once he was finished signing the book, he spun it back to me on the table and when he spun it he actually his thumb ripped the very top of the book above the the trade dress between the p and t and captain and uh marcus spotted it right away i was in a little bit of a moment of shock uh i thanked jim for his time shook his hand walked away and i just went through a whirlwind of emotions the fan in me was happy that I finally got Jim Steranko's autograph. The collector in me 
was really cheesed off that everything I had just put into this book, I may have just hurt it when it comes to grading it. So I, over the next little while, after I submitted the book to get graded for on-site grading to get picked up uh, later in the con, word quickly spread. People came up to me asking me about what actually happened. And I, I really tried to let go of it, but it was difficult to let go of. But the book came back, and after speaking to Rob, my partner on Only Slabs, who really knows his stuff about getting books uh, clean, pressed, and then graded, and with little defaults, like a rip, what it could actually do to the grade overall, I really thought maybe a four, four and a half would be in my future. Well, he basically said, Chris, you need to prepare yourself for something that might be even lower than that. So I did. I prepared myself to be somewhere in the neighborhood of somewhere between a two and a four. Well, Brittany at CGC, uh, who happens to be one of their online personalities, was the, the lady that was helping me get my books back. And... Uh, she was kind enough to do a reveal for me at the CGC booth, which I recorded. And the book came back much better than I expected. The fact that after the fact it got ripped, it came back a great 6.0. So as you can see, this is an iconic cover. Captain America 111. I'm sure as a collector, you've probably seen this cover a number of times. And uh, I'm very very happy about it uh, I'll see if I can get the tear to actually show up if you look at the P and the T uh, will it actually catch maybe not either way it's in my PC and it's not leaving but this book now has an incredible story behind it doesn't it uh, it says on the right side of the yellow label Death of Steve, Steve Rogers' Identity, Madam Hydra, Viper Appearance. And Storenko chose to sign above the date stamp that's there on the cover. Uh, this is the back. Again, hot off the press, did a great job cleaning it up and giving it a solid press. But I kind of wonder, if it wasn't torn, would I have gotten that 7 or 7.5? Seven we'll never know. But at this point, it doesn't matter. I'm happy to have a Storenko autograph in my collection. It'll proudly be proudly sit beside a lot of other legends in the comic book world. That's it. That's all. That's my hero, my hero's con haul. So before you walk away, right now I'm going to spotlight a bunch of pictures that I had taken with other members of the comic book community. Make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think overall of this series. Did you watch all the episodes? Were you a part of that live stream that I decided to do off off the cuff that ended up going for an hour while I was standing in line for Scotty Young's autograph? An hour standing in line. If you're one of those people that joined me during that live stream, thank you so much for help passing the time. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed that part of it as well. But I thoroughly hope that you enjoyed this entire series. Uh, if I get to go back to Heroes Con next year, I'm probably going to do the exact same thing. And But the only difference is, I hope that everyone that watches this video makes their way to Heroes Con as well. It's worth it. It really is worth it. Now here are the pictures. <laughs>